Happy uh, Good Friday. I was going to sit here and type a bunch of stuff, but uh, I'm lazy. Uh, just watching the employment stuff, uh, reading my Wall Street Journal, drinking my coffee, uh, and looking at a lot of good comments, especially Werner. Werner brings up some good points about, I love that they're going to call it Bidenomics or whatever it's going to uh, whatever it's going to be. So I want to uh, unpack some things. I uh, had dinner last night with a buddy of mine who owns a roofing company here in South Florida. I mean, which, I mean, I'm not going to say he roots for hurricanes, but he roots for hurricanes. But huge business, very big business down here in South Florida. Last night, he's like, dude, my CFO already told me here's how many people we're going to clip uh, if or when our corporate taxes go up. So, you know, Werner, I appreciate the red team with how you think the the economy's going to do great. Uh, I'm doing it. Uh, also, on my next list, the thing to do is take a look at my financials. Folks, taxes going up to a company isn't, it, it hits their bottom line, right? Did you see Jen Psaki the other day? You know, somebody's like, hey man, raising taxes on businesses as they're coming out of a pandemic, doesn't that not make sense? And she's like, well, they kind of got a good deal under Trump here so they can they can bear the burden. She used those words, really? So what if the businesses can't? So remember this. So for the folks who think that all this money going into, quote, infrastructure, which only a small percentage of it is, I didn't know elder and child care were part of building bridges and roads, but, you know, call me crazy. Um, remember, that stuff, even Barack Hussein Obama eventually admitted this. What do we admit? He said, quote, I'm paraphrasing, but he said, shovel-ready jobs do not exist. So the effects, the impact of all this, like, building a bridge or whatever, is going to be years into the future which might help the economy and stuff like that. What is immediate? What is immediate is the impact of higher taxes. So when they start clipping businesses and get more money from them, that's immediate. That's We won't see the impact of building a bridge or high-speed internet for old people in the middle of Montana for years, right? And it's a lie, folks. We still don't know if, and he, Frothing at the mouth the other day, he's like, "Oh, I'm, we're not raising taxes on anybody who makes a, you know under 400 grand." Is that a couple or is that a household? Or I mean, when you start doing math, when you look at a fam, that Peggy Noonan has a good article. Her op in the Wall Street Journal today talks about, "Hey, man, like a family of three in the middle of Jersey that's upper middle class or middle class makes 400, 500 grand a year is going to get slacked." So, uh, let, let let me let's just throw this out here right now. And I told you I was going to take a day or. Uh, you know, a couple days to kind of figure out what I'm doing here. The market can remain irrational longer than you can stay solvent, period. So, you know, does this hold your nose rally continue? Trade the market you have, not the one you want. Not that I want a down market or I want companies to lay off people or I want people to be pissed off that they're personal. It's such a lie, guys. You know it. Well, I don't make 400 grand a year, so my taxes aren't going to go up. Yeah, they are, man. When comp he told me last night, my buddy, so listen to this. Not only is he like, I'm already mapping out who's going to get laid off. I'm not a charity. He's like, if Joe Biden increases my corporate taxes, I'm clipping people, right? And he said, I'm also going to raise the prices of my stuff. Did you just hear what I said? Raise the prices of my stuff and my services. Inflation and stuff going up. So, guys, this is a cauldron of potential bad. This is there is no good in this Biden uh, tax grab, comma. The market only cares when it cares. Okay, but I am telling you, folks, and we'll see if it happens this time around. I don't think it will. This is too soon for this earnings period. But you ready for this? In future earnings calls, what can CFOs or CEOs start doing? Well, the impact of the coming tax thing is going to impact our earnings. We might start hearing this on conference calls. If I was a young enterprising financial reporter on an earnings call with Amazon, I'd be like, how's the Bidenomics going to impact Amazon? This, Or I could be completely wrong. Everybody ignores the tax increases. If I were the CEO of a company, even though I'm virtue signaling like the coward CEO of Delta Airlines, it's going to impact your bottom line. Gold. We we covered this a week or two ago. The Goldman Sachs note that says um, the average hit to EPS S and P five hundred companies EPS will be nine percent. Let that sink in. If you told me as a CEO, like, dude, no matter what happens next year, you're getting kicked in the in the gut for nine percent. That sucks. So. 
I'm probably going to, I'm going to keep my XLY and my Amazon in case I'm wrong. I mean, Amazon just had that rip your face off rally last week. Holy shit. Amazon came to life. Um, so I'm pro instead of being like hundred percent cash, because I don't, I still see a 20% bear market. I'm going to go back out to my original, what I said, what was that? Three weeks ago, four weeks ago, year to two years. Cause I, I needed to see details, right? I'm, I'm, I'm listening to Colin Powell. Colin Powell said, never get so close to your position that when you're presented with new Intel, you don't change your position. My position based on hearing Nancy, five scotch Pelosi going, uh, we're going to try and get it through the house by July 4th, comma, maybe the end of July. I love the July 4th date because she's going to do the whole, this is the America something, something act, which will be a lie. I also like the weekend of July 4th because hopefully all of you are going to be here in South Florida because on July 2nd, when Maverick comes out, we rented the IMAX down in, uh, in uh, Fort Lauderdale, it's like a hundred people. Everybody's going to be wearing flight suits. We're going to have a big event for the foundation. So make sure you do that. All right. Enough rambling on that. So Nancy's talking about April, May, June, July. That's four months. Ain't going to happen. Mm, August ish through the house over to the Senate. So we have at least six months to a year of this crap. Okay, but remember folks, if they go, hey man, we just approved this thing and it's retroactive, somebody explain to me how the stock market's gonna, gonna go up. Cause some people, I think Werner was like, uh, you know, the, the increase in productivity or the economy will offset tax selling. He did mention that what? The impact of higher corporate taxes. And oh, oh by the way, then Janet Yellen screwed this up the other day. She's like, Everybody, at, when Donald Trump did what he did and cut taxes and the economy exploded, lowest African-American, Hispanic, you name the metric, we were, remember January, that January, we'll remember that as the good old days before the pandemic. Everything was hitting on all cylinders. He beat China into the ground with the trade war, bringing a shitload of money in, uh, unemployment at record lows, uh, you know, everything was on, that the market was at record highs uh, for that time. Um, everything was going great. What did the rest of the world do? Every country lowered their corporate rate, tax rates and went, look at America. You know what Janet said? I dug this out today, reading doing with my Sharpie. And she said, well, we think that the world's going to follow our lead as we kind of turn around and raise taxes. What? Every other country's like, hey, that was a good idea. We're actually starting to hit on all cylinders. Why would we do this? As a matter of fact, if you're a smart leader... What do you do? You keep your damn taxes low, and what happens? Warren Buffett, being the limousine liberal that he is, out of America to other countries. That's going to happen as well, I guarantee it. What happened to Apple, folks, when Donald Trump, what happened under Barack Hussein Obama? Apple kept like a cabillion dollars in County Cork, Ireland, overseas. What happened under Trump? They were allowed to repatriate a shit ton of that cash. Thank God they bought a lot of other shares. What's going to happen under this dude? Capital flight. Guys, this is not bullish. The market can keep going up, but as far as the economy goes, and you got, I showed you the chart last week, and I showed you the Kramer picture that I finally found on my... I remember sitting there watching, and I took that picture. Best week in the stock market since 1938. Six million Americans out of work. This is not good for the economy. Paul Krugman's an idiot. He literally is a village idiot. If it is good for the economy, it will be the first time in the history of this nation that we've seen massive this type of spending and it be, quote, good for the economy. We already talked under Obama. The Obamacare wasn't infrastructure building it. Shit. It wasn't Frank and Dodd destroying Wall Street. Uh, and it wasn't the EPA. You can't do anything because a yellow-bellied sapsucker lives here. That's the other thing. I, I saw a good uh, discussion yesterday on people like, all this infrastructure shit, the Democrats actually created all the stuff that's going to keep it from happening. You can't construct a new bridge here. We have the yellow-bellied sapsucker who lives right here. So we're going to court for the next five years to fight you on this. Get ready for all this crap. Again, all the infrastructure, building a bridge, you build one bridge, building a bridge ain't happening overnight. What is happening overnight, your taxes are going up and companies' taxes are going up. Okay? So... I'm probably going to, I am not going to do the 100. I am going to go 50-50, baby. I am going to go at least 50% cash. Why? Because we're playing musical chairs. When, not if, when the market wakes up to this shit show of binomics, we will see that we're due, guys. This is it. Markets are cyclical, and it's looking for an excuse. So I'm going to, this will be a hold-your-nose rally for me or trade. 
I'm going to be Johnny on the spot. One hand on the ejection handle, one hand on the mouse uh, trade and stuff. But I'm going to, I will, you guys know I show you my portfolios, my real accounts live. And I'll show you that I'm sitting on half cash, man. Because I want to be able to, I don't, because I'll stay in the good names. You guys have seen me in the good names. Look at Microsoft last. Microsoft has been nice, slow and steady wins the race. It ain't going to zero. Even in a 20% pullback, I want to be able to take that 50% of cash and add to a good name uh, like that. So, but being 50 in and 50 in cash allows me like we did that January, the famous January when we pounded the market into the dirt, actually turned some folks here into millionaires. Um, I, you need to, you, you got to have some power to dry. Please have some powder try. Be very, very careful. I'm telling you, I know for a fact, based on my mastermind group, just dudes I know, ladies I know, around the world, family offices, people are starting to slowly back. Or they don't do this, folks. They don't. You will not see Axe Capital, Stevie Cohen, or Ken Griffin have a news conference like, we're getting out of everything or we're pairing everything. They don't do that, guys. Nobody does that. Listen, the, the Huang dude that almost blew up the market last week, the biggest hedge fund explode, uh, implosion since long-term capital management, that was bad. Um, that's the systemic risk. And I didn't even, let, let me wrap up here because I want to finish my coffee. Let me wrap up by saying this because I think Christine or somebody else in the thread said this and it was brilliant. Um, I didn't even once talk about what? Outside of America. You think Israel's going to let Iran get a nuclear weapon? I saw in the paper. Next week, people are meeting about the nuke deal. Israel ain't. Israel doesn't care what Europe does. Europe is in bed with Iran. They sell them shit and they get oil. I know for a fact they do. And our administration looks the other way. Israel doesn't give a shit about Europe. Israel cares about Israel. They will go to war with Iran to prevent them getting a nuke. They've told us this. Israel will attack Iran. Iran has told everybody this. We get a nuke, we're going to wipe Israel off the face of the map. That's a direct quote, man. China. China doesn't even have to fire a shot. They're destroying our military. We're destroying our military from the inside. Based on recent DOD directives, I'm an extremist. Do you think the government's out of control and overstepped its constitutional bounds? Y yeah. Do you think that our country or our leadership can't protect us from foreign threats? Y yeah. You're an extremist. Isn't that great? They just tarred. We lost, I was in a, a, a Facebook group, old fighter pilots, like 9,000 fighter POWs, Medal of Honor recipients. They threw us off Facebook. You go against community standards. We are the fucking community. 9,000 fighter pilots. These are the things we believe. Gone. We're over on MeWe now. I don't even know how to log on to that thing. Old fighter pilots, 9,000 fighter pilots, guys with combat, MiG killers, everything. POWs thrown off of Facebook. We're extremists. So China isn't even going to fire a shot as they take over this country. And they will invade Taiwan. They're already more or less kind of doing it. Last week, 20, 30 fighter attack aircraft, bombers, spy planes. What's Joe going to do? What's I'm sorry, what's Kamala going to do when China invades Taiwan? Do her cackle and laugh? North Korea? North Korea. Ballistic missile. Remember years ago? Donald Trump's going to get us killed. He's going to get us into a nuclear war with North Korea. The dude met the guy twice and actually walked into North Korea. Didn't. Now, if you're the leader of, if you're Xi Jinping or cream of some young guy or the Ayatollah, and you watch anything that Joe Biden does, did you see the other day when he was walking up the stairs to uh, Air Force One? There was literally memes of bars going crazy that he made it to the top of the stairs. We're clapping that our president makes it to the top of the stairs without falling. I wonder the dude hid in his basement for, uh, for for months and still won the presidency. All right, so that's me. I think I'm going to go 50-50. 50 good names-ish, 50 cash, ready to pull the trigger. Not only to watch the good names implode and get some more of that at a discount, but have some powder dry to pound it into the dirt, man. Double verticals, bearish double verticals, buying puts, whatever it is. When... Not if we get that 20% bear market in the next year to two, I'm back out to a year to two. Had to back it out when I see Nancy like, maybe by the summer we'll have a bill. Oh, man. Why? Because all the sucklings got to run. They, they all got to get on Nancy's teeth. Oh, damn, man, that's a bad visual. Sorry about that. All right, I got to go. Happy Good Friday. Have a great weekend. Happy Easter. God bless you all, and I'll uh, talk to you Monday. We'll see.